What's going on, action takers? Today we're talking about fears and what you can learn from them to tackle your own fears. What's going on, guys? Dr. Tank Farm D here, board certified practicing pharmacist and personal health coach, helping action takers like you take back control of their lives in a structured format. Although I am a practicing medicine specialist, I'm not your medicine specialist. So if you have any questions regarding your condition, please see your doctor. Let's get into it. So what are fears? According to the Oxford Dictionary, fears are an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. This is important because your body is telling you something is a threat to your life. It responds quickly, telling you that you need to either run or fight the problem that's at hand. The symptoms you see are often associated with fear are trembling, sweaty palms, nausea, dizziness, or up to a full-blown panic attack. So, according to the Washington Post, they had a survey on the top fears people had. And we're gonna go through them to see which ones are the most common fears. Number five is claustrophobia, which is the fear of confined places. If you have claustrophobia, you're imagining that you're stuck in a small place, unable to move, and often unable to breathe. You often suffer in very small places like subways, small buildings, elevators, and crowded places, such as concerts. The threat that your body is responding to is the inability to escape from that confined place. And as a result, you'll die a slow death being forgotten in there. The fifth most common fear is the fear of blood. The threat that your body is responding to here is that blood is a sign that there's danger nearby. People who have this fear imagine that this could be them in that scenario. The reason being that blood is supposed to be inside and if it's outside the body, there must be some trauma associated with it. And that they tell themselves, this trauma could happen to me if I'm not careful. The fourth most common fear is the fear of drowning. The threat that people respond to here is that they're not able to breathe underwater and they're not able to escape the situation they're in, in the water. Because they tell themselves that I'm not able to swim out of here, they panic, which caused them to not react and it makes the situation worse. They're not able to swim out, so they tell themselves, I can't swim, which makes it even worse for them. The third most common fear is the fear of snakes and spiders. The threat here is that some of these animals are actually venomous. Because of that, injection of their venom is gonna be lethal to you. The body responds to that and has a natural aversion to that. People who have this fear imagine that the spiders and the snakes that crawl onto them will immediately be a threat to them, so they need to avoid these creatures. They tell themselves that these are an immediate threat to me and I need to get away as soon as possible. The second most common fear is the fear of heights. The danger here is that you'll fall from these heights and die upon impact. People who have this fear tell themselves that any misstep is gonna cause them to fall off. They imagine that they'll fall regardless of any security measures taken to prevent them from it. And the most common fear is the most interesting one because it doesn't have a fatal threat to it. The most common fear is the fear of public speaking. People who have the fear of public speaking imagine themselves an embarrassment to themselves and as a result, society will disown them. This is interesting because in the mind, they've associated the society with survival. And if they don't have society approving of them, they will die. So what can you do about these fears? Well, because it's an emotional hijacking of your brain, you have to disarm it logically. It may not completely disarm it, but it helps you to rationalize these feelings you're having. You have to consider every little thing that is actually causing you to be afraid. Is it specifically the spider or a specific breed of spider? Is it the water itself or a large body of water? Next, you have to think about what triggers these fears. Is it when you're nearby the water or is it when you're actually touching the water? You also have to think, are you gonna die from these fears? Or are you gonna survive like you will when public speaking? You have to consider, are these fears preventing you from reaching your goal? Are they preventing you from living your life? You also have to wonder why you have these fears. Have you had these fears since you were a kid or did they develop recently because of a traumatic incident? You also have to consider, are you able to overcome these fears? And do you even want to overcome them? 
Now, imagine your life without these fears. What does your life look like on the other side? And what are the small steps you can take to approach these fears? Can you look at a bug and not be afraid of it? Can you look at blood from far away and not be afraid of it? Or is the sight of it instantly a panic attack for you? If you're struggling taking back control of your life in a structured format, check out one of our other videos. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay healthy.